Hey guys, so I'm just coming in to um, answer a question I got last week. I forgot to write the actual question down, <laughs> but and I can't even remember who it's from now, but I will share that um, in the replay. But the question was what to do with all the excess fabric when you're stitching something. You know, if you have to stitch on quite a large design, what do you do with all that excess fabric because you're only working on a small part at, the, at a time so i have a few different options i'm not like an expert in this because i don't really stitch large pieces very much but the next stitch along is pretty big so i'm definitely going to have more tips about this as i go through in the next few weeks but for now i will share what i know and if anyone has any tips that they want to share please feel free to pop them in so the first thing I recommend is so simple and it's just to use a larger hoop. So I'm quite comfortable using a 10 inch hoop to stitch with. This is a 10 inch hoop. Um, so that will obviously hold a larger area of your design. Usually I use an 8 inch hoop but 10 is also pretty comfortable. Sometimes it's not big enough though. So this project is like huge. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with this when it's finished. It's the Clouds Factory storybook one. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with it. So I just cut it as big as I could um, because I'm just not sure what I'm doing with it yet. So it's huge. So what I was doing for this one is, where have I put them? Are they? Just rolling it up. You can see where the roll lines were already because it's just been rolled up in my bag for two years because that's how long I've been stitching it for. <laughs> <laughs> so I just roll it up, fold the corners in a bit. Now my needle is stuck in the corner because I don't have a needle minder on this one for some reason. So let me just take that off a second. Um, fold it up and then I use just some binder clips. Now the only problem with this is that it makes your hoop a little heavier to hold. And I already have such a large hoop on here already that this is heavy when I'm holding it but I have different solutions for you but I'll just show you this if you don't have binder clips and your fabric isn't too thick you could use paper clips I have some in there actually let me show you it's all stuck so you could just use like little paper clips and just literally paper clip it on you could use pins to pin it um pin the corners in that's a needle not a pin but you know i don't always like to do that in my fabric though um it's not too bad an even weave but in either you might make holes now the bottom is a lot bigger right now because i'm working my way up so the top isn't too bad but this bottom is a lot longer um so i'm just gonna like fold it in a bit i have more solutions don't worry <laughs> This was like the first largest piece that I really stitched. So I just was doing this because I didn't know what else to do to it. But I have different solutions. Now this fabric is a lot thicker at the bottom. I really have to push my um, thing on. And this is just... Now for this side, I'm not too bothered because... I'll show you why. I am right-handed, so I stitch with my right hand. If you're left-handed, you might have to do this the other way. I don't mind a bit hanging over here as long as it's not in my holding hand where I'm holding the hoop um I don't mind if it's not on this arm um because it just kind of hangs out the way anyways I'm stitching because I go under and over I don't need to turn my hoop over to look at where I'm putting my needle anymore if you need to do that you might want to make that a bit more secure um that's one option also like because this is so heavy now you might want to get a clamp I have a clamp but I've lost my screw off it and now I can't use it. <laughs> I'll have to find it. It'll be on the floor somewhere. Um, next, I'm just going to pop that on the floor. My next option for you, if you don't have like needles or pins or anything like that, you can use your needle minder for the same thing, depending on how strong it is. So mine are quite strong, the magnets on the back. Um, if your magnet isn't strong enough, just buy some extra strong magnets from amazon they're like three pound or something so this is the peace calm and happiness stitch along that i ran last year and obviously this is quite long but thin um i still have not finished this i nearly have nearly i'm at the bottom um this is actually on sale tomorrow for my birthday sale 
so I just literally just I don't roll it too much because you don't want it too thick but one so you just like roll it into there and then I'm working at the bottom of the hoop right now so I don't need all this so like yeah I just wait there I can cover up the top with my needle minder and then just pop it on now for some reason this isn't going on now and it was just on <laughs> Oh, there we go so just be careful like I think what was wrong is I'm going over the stitches put your magnet on the fabric not over the stitches because that will obviously make it lose a bit of its hold um and just hold it like that because I'm working on the bottom I don't care that all this is covered at the top because I don't need to stitch this top part I'm stitching down here right now if I was stitching at the top I might move my hoop up a bit um and roll it from the bottom instead and like obviously if I wanted to I could pop a bit in here and the good thing with needle minders is they're so easy to just move around you can put two on if that isn't strong enough put another one over here um doesn't matter how many need if you've got I know most of us have more than one needle minder because we collect them <laughs> so just pop another one on the other side if that isn't strong enough but that's fine I just need one needle minder for that I this bit at the bottom won't bother me and that was quite a lot of fabric um rolled up there so that's the other option but I've saved the best for last and that is to use a scroll frame. Now, I'm quite new to scroll frames. I actually got one for the Heart of the Home Stitch Along that we're currently stitching. I wanted to use a scroll frame instead because the hoop marks just annoy me so much. I'm not great at getting them out. Um, I'm not really the best at hiding. <laughs> so I wanted a scroll frame and the, the only reason I've ever not got one of these is because um, of holding them, but the Heart of the Home Stitch Along was a banner that was quite skinny and a bit longer. So it didn't, like this was not, this is a nine inch by nine inch one. Although I don't really know how it's, maybe it's nine by 12. I can't remember. No, it's definitely only nine inches across. Um, so this was, this has been easy for me to hold in my hand as I'm stitching. It's not bothered me. It's not too heavy. And also a little bit of a random thing but you can kind of like push it onto your chest to hold it like so just to give it a bit of like um support so if you have like a bit of a longer one or a wider one I just kind of lean it on me when I'm like when I'm lying back <laughs> and just rest it on myself um but for example the next stitch along we're doing which it's not launching till like May so like no one panic but it is quite big and I'm thinking I'm gonna get like a floor stand maybe with a bigger scroll frame so I'll just quickly show you how these work I've already took these off these go on the top and bottom I'm not sure if it matters which way around it goes and I've not actually figured that out yet um, and I have it fell on the floor I've just used this like random piece of Ida that I had just some scrap Ida lying around so you just fold it over the top so it's going to catch in this groove here. These are honestly my new favourite thing. I don't think I'm going to go back to using hoops all the time to hold my eider. Um, so you want to make it quite straight. The brand I'm using is Albese. It's the same brand as the hoops. You can kind of see it on there. Um, you can get them on Amazon. There's so many different sizes. I'm definitely getting a few more sizes. Um, I do love hoops. I love using hoops. I love framing in hoops but for the banners and the the larger items these scroll frames have been a lifesaver okay this is really hard to do on camera <laughs> try and make it as straight as you can because if it's wonky it just isn't as secure or as tight and um, it just doesn't work as well so what you do is there's like a little lip inside there and you just pop it on like I said, I'm brand new to these. I'm not even sure if this is exactly how you do it, but it's been working for me. So, <laughs> oh, this is annoying on camera. There we go. So you do the top and then you spin it around and do the bottom. Same thing at the bottom. Um, but yes, these have saved me because I do find on the darker rider with a hoop, the hoop kind of marks it a little bit, not massively, but it does leave like a little mark behind. It comes off easy enough, but... Um, I'd rather it not be there and also like hoop marks are just the most annoying thing to get out it never it doesn't bother me if I'm framing in a hoop because I'll just use a hoop the size that I'm framing it in but when you're making a banner or something that's not going to be framed in a hoop it's really annoying to have those hoop marks on there um especially when like so if you're 
framing something in a hoop and it has a hoop mark and you can't iron it out just pulling on your fabric pulls the crease out a bit when you're framing it in your hoop and you're pulling it through it pulls the crease out but when you're making a banner just to like hang up loosely the creases are just so much more obvious um okay so we've got it in the top and bottom and now we just literally spin it around now I will say the one downside to these, and this is actually true, I think of all projects. So you just spin it around. So if you're gonna start in the middle, you want to pull it at the top and the bottom if you're starting in the middle. If you're starting at the top, obviously pull it more at the bottom. But yeah, the, the biggest problem, like I was just saying, when you're stitching large pieces, I find, and you're trying to roll up your extra fabric because you don't have like a floor stand or like a large frame to hold it, is the fact that you can't see your full pattern so on the heart of the home stitch along i was using one of these and i got to like the bottom half and i was like one stitch over i made a mistake and so the bottom half of my design was one stitch over from the top half but i just couldn't tell because the top half was rolled up and i was just working on this bottom section and i had excess down here so the rest of the design was all rolled up and so I just didn't, couldn't tell that I'd made that mistake until I took it all off. And something I do with my hoops when I'm like stitching with a hoop is I will sometimes take the design out the hoop when I'm not stitching just so it doesn't crease and stuff and so I can see it when it's big. Um, but these take so long to put on and off that I'm not taking it out when I'm not stitching it. I don't need to. But I mean, I suppose what, what I'll do next time, so I'm just tightening up these, I'm um, sorry, I totally forgot to tell you what I'm doing. I'm just tightening up these with my hand. So I'm pushing into the back and I'm just turning this around. Um, you could use like a little spanner. Is that what they're called? <laughs> to like wrap around that. I have no idea what they're called. Um, but yeah, what I will do next time I use one of these, because I the design I'm stitching currently is um, a banner as well, a new design I'm bringing out, but this is too small for the design. So where is it? So what I tried to do, I tried to be clever and fold in the edges and then roll it up. That did not work. Don't do that. <laughs> I just need a slightly larger scroll frame for this because it's quite big. Um, but once it's in, it isn't as, I don't find it as taut as a hoop. Can you see how it's a little bit loose over here? It probably just needs tightening up a bit and um, pulling around a bit. Also, this isn't, I mean, some people might be stitching on this size, but maybe not. But the edges aren't as taut, but the middle's okay. This really does need just pulling around a bit. Um, so it's not quite as taut as a hoop, but I haven't found any problems with that. My stitches still look neat. So much easier to hold and doesn't crease rolls all that excess fabric away doesn't get it all in your way so i just love them and i will definitely be buying some more sizes um and yeah that is basically what i've been doing now is scroll frame or the needle minder or the binder clips um i don't know any other ways you can get that fabric out the way now these frames you can get like literally humongous ones that go on your floor if you have the space i, I definitely want one in here soon because i can clear I need to clear that side of the room um that, that is definitely something i want you can get massive scroll frames on a floor stand um but yeah like i said the only problem is that you can't see the whole design unless you unroll it have a little look and then roll it back up which isn't that much of a problem it doesn't take too long it's when you have to take the whole thing out that's what takes forever <laughs> but that is what i do for my excess fabric if anyone has any other tips that they do, please share because like I said, I don't really stitch huge designs. I'm more of like a small design scale, but this year, the three stitch alongs, this stitch along isn't too big that we're doing, but it is a banner, so I didn't want the hoop marks. The next two stitch alongs, because I already have them both planned, are big. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what's happening to me with all these big designs? So um definitely need some more tips on how to keep this fabric out the way and i'm sure i'll pick up more as i'm stitching the next two stitch alongs but yes i would love to hear your thoughts as well if you have any other tips or how on how you keep your fabric rolled up and out the way while you're stitching just pop them either pop them here if you're here live and you have any tips just let me know if you're watching the replay you can just write in the comments and I'd really appreciate that because I bet a few of you have been asked, have been wondering about that too. Um, I think I only had one question about the um, 
about the fabric. I can't remember though. There was definitely one question about what to do with excess fabric. Most of the other questions last week were about time and time to stitch and how to fit more stitching in, how to find the time when the kids are home, how to find the time when you're working full time. Lots of questions about time. So that will be the next answer. That's going to be a bit of a longer live though. So I'm going to have to wait till the kids aren't here because you can probably hear them upstairs. Um, and tomorrow when the sale goes live, if you go on there, there's going to be like a wait list for something so um it's going to be something to help you fit more stitching in so if you want to pop over to the sales page tomorrow um the birthday sale it, there'll be a link in my bio tomorrow morning when i wake up i'll pop the link in it does go live at midnight tonight i'll send an email out well i'll schedule the email because i will be sleeping at midnight <laughs> um so you can pop over and have a little look at what i'm talking about tomorrow morning but for now i'm going to go and going to go and pop this replay up for you so you can come back to it and hopefully if anyone has any tips they'll write on the comments you can read the comments and I'm really sorry that I can't remember who asked this question but thank you for asking and I hope this answer was helpful and I will speak to you soon. <laughs>